In 2011, Brad Stevens took his Butler Bulldogs to their second straight national championship game, cementing himself as one of the greatest college basketball coaches of the time. Today, we will take a look at three of the sets Stevens liked to utilize in his biggest games from 2010 as well as 2011, including what I think might be one of his favorites on this episode of Climb Hoops. If you watched Butler in the NCAA tournament in 2010 and 2011, or if you watched Butler at all during Brad Stevens' tenure there, you'll notice that they like to run action out of a horns set. Drawn here is one of the actions involving a fake handoff and a dribble at pitch to Chase DeGaulle, one of Butler's highest percentage shooters at the time, which you will see in the first two clips. Saturday, Olander gets the first basket of the game. Apparently another call play to go inside the tower. You'll notice at this point, because they didn't get anything out of the initial set, they'll go into their continuity ball screen action, and they end up getting their shot blocked there. This time, the dribble at pitch is going to be given to their best player at the time, Gordon Hayward. The next play will be similar, except instead of a fake handoff, Sean Van Zant will use a ball screen and reverse the five popping out. I also really like here how they flow right into the Euro ball screen action involving a back cut followed by a pitch and a ball screen. Andrew Smith gives it up outside. Perimeter passing sets up Howard. No, he missed all five from behind the arc on Saturday. And missed all Finally, on you'll see a double pick and roll followed by a dribble handoff pop that gives Matt Howard an open three. Number five in the far right corner. Connecticut now has missed its last eight shots. Howard, he needs a three, hasn't had one in Houston. Now he does after missing his first six from Saturday through the first shot of tonight. In the last play, Shelvin Matt gets all the way to the rim off a of pick and roll. What liked about that move. Took his time, surveyed the situation, and then went to work with one of his favorite shots. Mack driving and splits defenders and lays it in off the glass. The next set we're going to talk about can be seen in the road to the 2010 and 2011 Final Fours. I call it the back door set, and I really, really like this set. You'll start with two exchanges on the perimeter. On the second exchange, the four will lift from his spot, clearing out the paint. The three will dribble to the top of the key and dump it down to the four, while the five sets a back screen for the two. You can dump it down to the two or give it down low to your five for a one-on-one -on -one look in the post. Here, you'll see a dump down to the two for a wide open layup. This time, Gordon Hayward will follow his pass to the five, and he'll slip a down screen on the ball side for what should have been a wide open layup. The last play I want to show you guys is what I think might be one of Brad Stevens' favorite sets from his time at Butler. I call it the empty set. I saw it multiple times in multiple games throughout his tenure at Butler. You will start in horns and your five will pop out to the right wing. Reverse to the five while the two empties out the backside to the ball side post. The four will set a back screen for one and if it's open, you can throw the lob to one. If not, one will come back out to the backside wing. Two reversals, and then the two will set a back screen for five. Hit five if he's open, or if you have a mismatch in the post. 
Finally, the 2 and 4 will turn and set a stagger screen for your best shooter, the 3, who will get a shot at the top of the key. In each set, you will see variations and wrinkles depending on matchups. UConn's bigs are not necessarily scorers. In fact, Oriaki doesn't have a double. Here, they will completely miss Matt Howard wide open in the post. Well, in the game the other night, they got 20 points and 20 rebounds from their four front court players, did UConn. It's the goal. Can he do it a second? No, wide left. And it's Walker. Gonna make adjustments Here, they empty out, but instead of running the set, they go right into a ball screen and end up getting a wide open shot in the deep corner. Butler defense, I think that's their best attack, is to go with Lamb off those screens rather than try to go at those high pick and rolls with. They're in a national title game and had two surgeries over the summer, missed really playing for months. Now he's uh, off the bench and ready to go check in. So Lucius. By the spark plug, coming back. Howard remains out of the lineup for the Butler Bulldogs. Delvon Rowe. I really like what they do here because they run the same set from a sideline out of bounds look. A lot of spacing and ball movement and screen set. Norad will bring it up. He's uh, talking about a leader, just a sophomore. His first month on campus at Butler, he was elected the freshman class president. Impressive. Got a great personality and obviously leadership qualities to match. Again, just a sophomore. Here he is, Norad. He doesn't like to shoot. He wants to set other people. Sets up two. Here the play breaks down because of a bad pass, but you'll notice. Most of the time they run this set, they get a paint touch, which results in greater opportunities to score. Kansas had 18 offensive boards themselves, so that's a factor here. You got to watch that tonight. Pond goes back outside. That pass got away. Here, so here they use a variation of the set to get Andrew Smith a look in the post. It's a good look, but VCU triples down on him, and he actually ends up hitting the ball off the bottom of the backboard and he does not score. They love mixing the defense exactly. up. Remember, Shaka Smart worked with Billy Donovan of Florida, who's renowned for his uh, varying defenses. That's off the hands of Smith. He was double teamed. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what other offenses, defenses, or games you'd like to see broken down. I'm doing this for coaches, so I always want coaches to be able to take a little tidbit here and there from the content that I put on the channel. If you don't mind, hit the thumbs up and subscribe button so you never miss a breakdown and join us next time on Climb Hoops.